The simplest among hydrocarbons are the alkanes. In this video, we'll try to discuss alkanes in details. An alkane is a hydrocarbon in which there are only single covalent bonds. In any alkane, all the carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds are single covalent bonds, and all the other bonds are carbon-to-hydrogen bonds. The carbon atoms in an alkane can be arranged in a straight chain or in a chain that has branches. Recall that a carbon atom has four valence electrons, and a hydrogen atom has one valence electron. So one carbon atom can form a single covalent bond with four hydrogen atoms. This will bring us to the simplest alkane, methane, with one carbon and four hydrogens, followed by ethane with two carbons, propane, three carbons, and so on and so forth. And these are the ways on how to draw the structural formula of alkanes. We can write the molecular formula or show the complete structural formula or the condensed structural formula or we can draw a line angle formula. The molecular formula of the first 10 alkanes are given in this table. For the complete structural formula, let's try methane, CH4. Because carbon has four valence electrons, a carbon atom always forms four covalent bonds. So this is the complete structural formula of methane. How about ethane with two carbons and six hydrogens? You see, the first band is between the two carbons. We look at the first carbon, since it's already bonded with another carbon, it can still accommodate three more hydrogens. The same with the second carbon, we need three more hydrogens. And that is the complete structural formula of ethane. How about the condensed structural formula? Let's look at ethane again. After drawing your complete structural formula, we notice that the first carbon has three hydrogens as well as the second carbon. So, to write the condensed structural formula, we identify the number of hydrogen in every carbon. And we will only show the band between carbon and carbon. The band between carbon and hydrogen is already understood in writing the condensed structural formula. So for ethane, we have CH3-CH3. How about pentane? This is the complete structural formula and the condensed structural formula would be CH3-CH2-CH2-CH2 and CH3. How about line angle formula? In line angle formula, we draw diagonal lines and connect them together. Carbon atoms are located at each intersection and at the ends of lines. And so for pentane, this is the line angle formula. How about hexane? This would be the line angle formula for hexane. Let's try some few more examples. Draw the condensed structural formula for octane. The molecular formula of octane is C8H18. And so the condensed structural formula will look like this. How about this? Draw the line angle formula for decane. Decane has a molecular formula of C10 and then H22. So, there will be 10 carbons and the line angle formula will look like this. Now, we move on to branch chain alkanes. What are these branch chain alkanes? Look at the figure on the right. You notice that one hydrogen is missing. Instead, it is replaced by some group of atoms. An alkane with one or more alkyl groups is called a branch chain alkane. What are these alkyl groups? 
think of any alkyl group as just an alkane with one of the hydrogens removed. Look at our example here. We have one carbon and three hydrogen. It is almost the same with methane which has one carbon and four hydrogen. This CH3, we call it methyl. Just like ethyl with the molecular formula of C2H5, which is almost the same with ethane minus one hydrogen. And these groups or any atom that can take the place of a hydrogen atom on a parent hydrocarbon molecule is called a substituent and the longest continuous carbon chain of a branch chain hydrocarbon is called the parent alkane and how do we name branch chain alkanes the first thing that we have to do is to find the longest continuous chain of carbons in the molecule or that is the parent hydrocarbon. If you look at our example here, this is the longest continuous chain. We have six carbons, so that is hexane. The next step is to number the carbons in the main chain in sequence starting at the end that will give the substituent groups attached to the chain the smallest number. So let's try to start from left to right and then we'll see if the branch will get the smallest number. And let's compare it if we'll start from right to left. From left to right, we'll get number 2 for the branch while from right to left, we'll get number 5. Therefore, we'll choose the sequence starting from left to right. And the third step. Add numbers to the names of the substituent groups to identify their positions on the chain and make these numbers become prefixes to the name of the substituent groups. We only have one substituent in this example and its number is 2. And our substituent here is called methyl. And finally, to name this branch chain alkane, we write the entire name without any space. We use comma to separate the numbers and use hyphens to separate numbers and words. How do we do that? We write the number of the branch, number 2, and hyphen, and then the name of the substituent, methyl, and then the name of the parent hydrocarbon, hexane. So we have 2-methyl hexane. How about this example? This is the longest chain. And which end should we start counting? Let's try left to right. We compare it from right to left. We notice that both sequence will give number 3 for the branch. So either way will be correct. The name of the parent hydrocarbon is pentane. Our substituent is called methyl and therefore the name of this alkane is 3-methylpentane. How about this example? Again, the first thing that we have to do is to find the longest continuous chain and many will think that this is the parent hydrocarbon, which is wrong because this is the longest chain. I repeat, the longest chain. The substituent here is methyl. And how about the counting? If we start from right to left, we have number 4 for the branch. While if we start from left to right, we have number 3 for the branch. Therefore, We'll choose left to right. And so, the name of this alkane is 3-methylhexane. We move on to another example. Let's try this one. Where is the parent hydrocarbon? If we choose the straight one, we have 6 carbon. But if we do it this way, it's also correct because we get 6 hydrocarbons. So for this example, I will be doing it this way. 
and our parent hydrocarbon is hexane. How about our substituent? You notice that there are two carbons and five hydrogens. This is called ethyl. How about the numbering? If we do it left to right, we'll get number four, but from right to left, we'll get number three. So we choose sequence right to left. And so the name of this alkane is 3-ethylhexane. How about this example? Where is the parent hydrocarbon? If we do it this way, we get 4 carbons. This way will give us 4 carbons as well. But this way will give us 6 carbons. And this way will also get us 6 carbons. I'll be using this way for this example. How about the numbering? You notice that we have two substituents. From left to right, we'll get a number of 2 and 3. But from right to left, we'll get a number of 4 and 5. The trick here is that if you add 2 and 3, we'll get 5. If we add 4 and 5, we'll get 9. We'll choose the smaller number. So we're gonna use 2 and 3. Both of our substituents are methyl. To name this alkane, we have to use prefixes to indicate the appearance of the same group more than once in the structural formula. Common prefixes are di or twice, tri that is for three times, and tetra if it's four times. So the name of this alkane is 2 comma 3 dash dimethylhexane. How about this example? Again, the first thing that we have to do is to find for the parent hydrocarbon. Going straight will give us 6 carbons. And this way will also give us 6 carbons. But this way will give us 7 carbons. So that is the longest chain of carbons. Those that are not part of the parent hydrocarbon will be our substituents. So we have ethyl and we have methyl. How about our numbering? From left to right, we'll get 4 and 6. From right to left, we'll get 2 and 4. So since 2 and 4 are smaller, we're gonna use sequence right to left. But which one we're gonna write first? Is it the methyl or the ethyl? In this example, we list the names of the alkyl groups in alphabetical order. For the purpose of alphabetizing, we ignore the prefixes such as di, tri, and so on. And therefore, the name of this alkane is 4-ethyl-2-methylheptane. And more examples, how about this hydrocarbon? Where is the parent hydrocarbon? The longest chain will give you 8 carbons, so you have to do it this way. Next, you identify the substituents. We have ethyl and then there are two methyls. How about our numberings? If we start from left to right, we'll get 4, 4, and 6. But if we do it from right to left, we'll get 3, 5, and 5. And if we add them together, we'll find out that the proper sequence to follow is from right to left. And we have to start writing ethyl first before methyl. And so, the name of this hydrocarbon is 5-ethyl-3,5-dimethyloctane. How about if the hydrocarbon is represented as line angle formula? How can we name this? Again, we will need to find the parent hydrocarbon. In this example, we have 6, so that is hexane. And the line that is not part of the parent hydrocarbon will be the substituent. One line will represent methyl, two lines will be ethyl, and so on and so forth. 
and still we need to find the sequence that will give the branch the smallest number so for this example it would be from right to left so the name of this hydrocarbon is 3-methylhexane and that's it for this video as always happy solving